Greetings, viewers. Just a video by Adventure Link. Got a repair video for everyone. Awesome. Working on a 2006 Dodge Grand Caravan with the SXT package. Although this could apply to pretty much all fourth generation Chrysler and Dodge minivans as a whole. And what we are doing today is we are doing a total front end brake R&R. This includes your calipers, rotors, and uh, well, what's left of these pads here? Just so you know, these instructions will apply to the driver's side just as much as the passenger side. Although, as a heads up, if you are doing a complete front end brake job, when you bleed your brakes at the end, you'll start at the right front tire, get that all bled out, and then you'll come over to the driver's side to bleed that out. If you're doing only one side like I'm doing in today's video, which is only this driver's side tire, then you only, need, you only need to bleed that one side. Yay! Yeah! So obviously the first thing you need to do is jack up your vehicle, get it up in the air using jack stands, drive on lift, forearm lift, don't use ramps, they won't be of any help to you. See that little orange block back there? Make sure you get a pair of those. One for each back tire, block them off. Shake your van up front so that way you can make sure it's nice and secured. Because your safety matters on my channel. Yes it does, don't deny it. I care about your safety. Next thing you want to do, well, I've already did that step for you, is take off the tire. It is a 19 millimeter lug nut if you are using the ones with the little caps on them still. Otherwise, if you lost your caps a long time ago, if you just brought it down to an 18 millimeter, give or take. As a tip, if your vehicle is up in the air, you'll need to use an impact. Otherwise, if you do not have an impact, then you may want to pop off the lugs loose before you jack the vehicle up. Now I got a question for you. You ready for the easiest brake job ever? Assuming that by the time you get all the hardware off, you can yank just, just yank this caliper right off? Well, let's get to it. First thing you'll need to do is just loosen and tighten the banjo bolt here. This is a... Um, yeah, 16 millimeter socket. You want to loosen this up. Just like a half, like a quarter turn loose. If you see a little bit of brake fluid, stop. That is enough. Tighten it back up. You only want to tighten it down just like so, quarter turn. Nothing more, nothing less. It is, that's going to matter a lot later on when you transplant your line from the old caliper to the new. Before you loosen up anything, you may also want to consider setting up a bungee cord or a piece of wire. That way you can hold the caliper on later. Well, of course, support it from the strut. So the next thing you want to do is you want to remove these two 21 millimeter bolts that secure the brake caliper to the steering knuckle. It's 21 millimeters or if SAE tickles your fancy. Or if that's all you got, then it's a 13 16 inch. There goes one, and there's the other. See, right there it is. Now as you can see, these are pretty easy peasy to get to, and they were easy peasy for me. Uh, just as a fair warning, these bolts were pretty, like a, pretty much like a bear to get off, you know, that one down there. And that one up there, although they, although as you saw they were easy for me, that's because I already loosened those. Just like with my wheel hub and bearing video, these bolts were a bear to get off. So what we got are some secret weapons. Got the good old penetrating oil. Got the good old cheater bar here. Put it on the end of your ratchet and away you go. And of course as a last resort, if you have a map gas torch or an acetylene torch, you could heat up where the bolts are. But please, please be careful because this here is your CV axle joint and this is for the driver's side. And I'll let you in on a little sneak, pe sneak preview as to how to do CV axles on the driver's side of a 4th generation Chrysler or Dodge minivan. As you can see, there's all these bolts all around there. If you think this is a simple pry out and pop in job, wrong. There's all these bolts back there and they all seem pretty difficult to get to. So ruining this TV joint boot here would probably really ruin your day. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this quick tip. If you do happen to go with the whole cheater bar method, turn your steering wheel all the way out to where the, to where the brake bolts, this one and that one, are facing more out towards you. That way you got a lot more room 
to put a super long cheater bar on your ratchet. Then you can start going to town with these things. Well, I just tighten it up a little bit, but you get the, you get the same basic idea. Just turn your wheel where the wheel looks like this. Put your, put your cheater bar on and away you go. Preferably in the proper manner. Now, normally from here, this whole unit is supposed to slide off as a unit. Normally. Ugh. Well, okay then. It looks like it's probably one to... Probably looks like it's going to do something. Will it go? Will it go? Yes, it did. Ta-da! One freed caliper. Okay, so now the so now the question is, even with all that Hercules strength and you still can't get the caliper off, what do you do? Good question. What I would do from here is put three lugs back on the caliper, tighten it, or not on the caliper, but the rotor, tighten the lugs up as far as you can by hand. Then you want to resituate the caliper so that way the caliper holes, the mounting holes for the caliper here, mount up to where it is on a steering knuckle, put the bolts back in, tighten them down. Then that little space there between the brake pad and the piston, you're going to want to squeeze a pry bar in and you're going to, try, going to try to force the piston back in so that way it'll compress and you can free the caliper. Then of course when you compress it in, just disconnect everything, try again. In any case, once you get the caliper freed, then you want to support it up there at the top, just like so. And of course from here, if you had to put some lug nuts back on, take them off. Being that these are all by hand, they should just slide off by hand. And we could play a little parts blanco. Don't care. Then slide the rotor off. Yay! That's all there is to removing the brakes. Of course, from here, removal, or reverse of removal, rather, is your installation. But there are special procedures and such that you may want to follow, so please listen up. Okay, so this is the stuff we're going to use today. I've got these wherever platinum brake pads. Um, the part number PMD857H. Additionally, there's a PMKD857. Google search takes it back to the first part number, so whatever. I guess whatever works. It, this one came from Advance Auto. But I did get these two from Amazon. The Centric Freight Caliper. It's part number 141.63026. And of course with this you'll get everything but the pads. See? Everything but the pads. Do not lose this little red baggie. That is your hardware kit, your, your braces, your new banjo bolt, your crush washers. Don't lose this red baggie. Or whatever color baggie your hardware comes in. Then of course we got a vented rotor from Dura International. Part number BR53004. I will put links to these in the video description. Just so you know, it is possible to get a, a complete brake caliper. That does also com come with uh, pads pre-installed. But since I had a pair of pads ready to go, like these from another brake job, these are fresh by the way, figured why not. Okay, so before we get the new caliper on, first thing you want to do obviously is make sure you can loosen up this caliper bleed, the bleed screw for your caliper. It's a 3 8 inch wrench or 10 millimeter socket or some other kind of equivalent. The 10 millimeter socket would barely fit. The 3 8 with a tight fit but works. But in any case you want to make sure you can loosen and tighten this. Be warned this can be a bit of a bear to undo so if it fights you don't be surprised. You want to make sure this does loosen and tighten because if it does not loosen and tighten Bonus points if you break it, then that means you're going to have to take the copper back and get a new one. Additionally, you could also use a 10 millimeter deep well socket to get it on and off. See, 10 millimeter socket now works just fine. See, 
And it even says 10 millimeters somewhere on here. Yep, there it is, 10 millimeters. And as you can see, another nice thing is that this says it's a 14 millimeter. I guess that's a precursor to what to expect for your new banjo bolt is a 14 millimeter socket. Of course, you can always remove this cap by hand, but you want to put the cap back on and not touch it at all because you'll need it for later. Unfortunately, there may be times where you had to take a BFH to your, brake, to your old brake rotor to get it off. This is why, so if you want to, to prevent this from happening in the future, or if that was your case, you could take a wire brush and or some sandpaper, clean off all the rusty crusties. If you had a wire wheel attached to like a grinder, uh, yeah, if you had a wire wheel attachment on a grinder, this would work out a little better. But in any case, just scrape off as much rusty crusties as you can. Now, of course, I don't have access to a grinder with a wire wheel, so I did the best I could with this wire brush. But you want to clean it up as best as you can. After that, you want to take some anti-seize and, and paint it all over this um, hub here. Paint it all over as best as you can. Make sure you get inside the hub here, too, where the brush is. Nail that as well. Something to know about these um, anti-seize on the hub here. You know, it's one thing to try to nail the fat part of each one of these studs. But it's another thing to nail the studs themselves with anti-seize. If you do get anti-seize on the studs, just take a cloth, like a shop towel or something, wipe it off. Should be fine. And for the overly paranoid, you could also coat the inside of this rotor with some anti-seize as well. But with your rotor, you just line it up with the studs, slide it in. Just like so. And as a quick tip in order to keep your rotor nice and straight whenever you're trying to install the new caliper and pads, just put three lug nuts on and you're good to go. Next thing you want to do is uh, take your take your brake clean or brake cleaner and nail the rotor. Nail the entire surface that contacts the brake pad. Do this because there's grease that's on the left over from the factory and this can affect your braking initially. So in order to help calm that down, we use brake clean. Don't forget to nail both sides, front and back. Okay, pad bracket preparations. See these two long uh, pieces of metal here, here, and over here? Nail both of these with brake lubricant. Additionally, here and here are where your caliper bolts contact into the caliper bracket, so you may want to nail these two with some anti seals. Don't forget to also nail this piston here all around the seal with a lot of brake lube. And by the way, your long uh, stud things go right in those holes. Don't forget to also nail these two wings here. You know, the one on the right, one on the left. Nail those with some brake lubricant, or you can use anti-seize to nail those. Okay, so to make your life a little easier, I want to offer this tip. On the back of these brake pads, especially on the part that goes on the piston, there's this little brace. I'm not sure what the deal with this brace is, but what I did was I took a vice grip, bent these two outside prongs in and make sure all the and make sure they were straight as possible. You just load it up in the caliper like I said. Make sure you line it all in the pad bracket where it goes over here. Then make sure the other side snuggles in the same way. Press down and the pad is in. Yay. I'm pretty sure the entire time I was hearing the whole Mortal Kombat theme, I'm like, round one, fight. <laughs> and uh, for the purpose of this part of the video, let's just say that both of these wings, this side and this side, were lubed with brake lube or anti-seize. Okay, now it slides right on in. Next thing you want to do, you want to install this little bracket here that holds in the pads. Make sure that all the pads are all fully seated and installed because once this goes in, it's in. Make, like I said, make sure everything's all pushed in, all aligned. You'll have these two ears, one here, one here up on these upper edges. Then you'll push down with your thumb until these, little ta until these tabs go in the holes here and everything locks in place. Then of course from here, it's a matter of lining up your pads to make sure all your pads are nice and in. Then you'll line up the caliper, caliper in with the rotor. Then you'll line up the caliper with your steering knuckle. Get your bolts in. One up here. Remember, one up here. One down there. They're both 21 millimeters. 
Just so you know, these torque down to 125 foot-pounds. Well, here's the new banjo bolt halfway assembled. See, as you can see, you need one cross washer right up there. Okay, as you can see, we have the new banjo bolt here. It is a 16 millimeter bolt. Fits in perfectly, see? And 16 millimeters, yay. Okay, now here's the fun part. Now you gotta transfer the old line to the new caliper while keeping in with the cross washer alignment. And now I'll go over some Break bleeding instructions for you real quick. First off, you'll need a second person to help you out. And you will need some brake fluid. As you can see, this is your brake fluid reservoir. It looks like there's still plenty of fluid for now to make sure. You want to stick your finger in until you touch fluid. Then you might want to top it off as necessary. Just a fair warning. Brake fluid does eat through paint. So do not get the brake fluid on the paint. Wipe it off like, say, on this uh, cowl here. This little cover or what a, preferably with the cloth or something. Make sure you do keep your brake fluid checked and topped off. Especially if you do have ABS. Because if you let this master cylinder go dry, especially on ABS, then you just pretty much turn this little part of your maintenance task into fun at the shop because now they got to flush the brake fluid and purge the air out with one of their special computers. Which is not fun at all. Now, if you do not have ABS, then it's not so bad. All you got to do is just fill up a brake fluid all the way, then bleed all your brakes, all four brakes in a proper order, and you should be good to go from there. But ABS, it's a different ball game, people. Uh, remember your bleeding order. If you are doing a complete front end brake job, you know, both front tires, start with the front right tire here first, and then move over to the front driver's side tire. If, on the other hand, you're only doing one side, which, for what it's worth, you're supposed to do break, breaks in pairs. But if you only have time or energy or resources or money to do just one side, just like with the driver's side in today's video, then you only get to bleed this side only. So we only get to bleed this driver's side here. Yay! Now, bleeding brakes does take teamwork. Um, you will need someone in the driver's seat. There is no one in there now, but I will get someone shortly. Probably do it this off cam, but I will go over the instructions real fast. Make sure that your windows are down and you have someone in the driver's seat. Remember, proper communication and teamwork is key. Basically, what you're going to want to do is you're going to have your partner pump the brake pedal like three or five times. After like the third, fourth, fifth time of being pumped, he'll hold it down or she'll hold it down. When it's held down, he will say like holding or agree to some kind of keyword like holding or it's held down or something. Then you'll come back to this bleeder here, crack it open. One of two things should happen. Either air will come out or brake fluid. If air comes out, then uh, close this back off and uh, try again. You know, pump the brake pedal three or five times. Hold it in, crack open the bleeder, close it back. Then once you get a steady flow of brake fluid, pump the brakes again one more time just to be sure. You know, pump it up, hold it in, crack open the bleeder. If you get another steady stream, good for you. The job's done. Now, some other common things about leaks, like do check for leaks. If, there, if you are leaking anywhere while the brake pedal is pumped up, stop. Find out where you're leaking from and fix it. I found that a lot of times this brake line will leak a lot. Either the washer is not properly placed or you have too many washers or this little square is not in alignment with its little home here. That's usually the most common experiences I've had in my experience with brake fluid leaking from this spot. Other than that, if you have any other leaks, like say if you're entire pistons already leaking then i don't know what else to say you're just going to take it off and get a new caliper one more thing make sure you do keep an eye on your brake fluid like every other bleed out that way you don't run out of brake fluid that way you don't ruin your day any farther than what you may already have and with your brakes all properly bled then you can put the tire back on remember it is about 95 to 105 foot pounds or about 100 foot pounds will do you remember to also check your lug nut torques after about 100 miles Make sure everything is all nice and good. Okay, now with the brakes blood and the tire back on and the whole thing assembled now, now you want to check for workmanship. First thing you want to do is come in here and uh, pump your brake pedal several times before you take off. Keep in mind, make sure you do several slow stops and several full speed stops. What you want to do is you want to, you know, check to make sure you'll stop smooth and consistently. You don't lose your brakes. You don't hear any other noises and anything else weird like that. And of course, when you come bring it home or if you go somewhere, check for leaks just in case. That's it for doing a front end brake job on your 2006 Dodge Grand Caravan SXT. 
Although this should apply to pretty much all 4th generation Chrysler and Dodge minivans as a whole. Let's go wrap this up. Okay, complete front end brake service. Well, this was a sort of easy job. Anyone can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Just remember to keep a few things in mind. Why you may replace your front brakes sooner or more frequent than the rears is your front brakes take up about 80% of your braking. The rears do about 20%. The front end puts in the most work and the rear end puts in the less. Keep in mind signs of a stuck piston. Like if your piston seal is all cracked, missing, torn, is leaking, or if it won't uh, co come back in with like a channel lock or something. Your piston is stuck. There's also other brake noises too, like little chirpy noises when you stop. Your brakes sounding like they're on a brake lathe as you're going. Sounding like metal on metal, like like on the train tracks when a train goes by on the train tracks. You may want to do a brake inspection then and make sure everything is good. Also forgot to mention too, that while you're in there doing your brakes, if you have any other suspension parts that use Zerk fittings, like your tie rods, ball joints, the uh, sway bar linkage, or anything else that takes a Zerk fitting, this would also be a good time to consider to top off the oil in those as well. And look at this. I totally got a, uh, a core sticker here, even though I ordered it off Amazon, and I'm not sure how Amazon handles cores. So whatever. I guess the whole entire brake hardware is going to go to the scrapyard and I'll get a couple bucks for it. So there is that. If nothing else, if you do um, your own brakes and there is no core, Please take it to the scrapyard. That way the metal will get used somewhere else. Like I said, it's also best to replace brakes in pairs because if one end starts to go south, then the other end doesn't have that much long for this world. Additionally, it's always best to do a front end brake job anyway because you never know because I thought I might have to just do a complete pad check, but nope, stuck piston. I guess it probably all depends upon how old the vehicle is and how old the brake hardware is, but a complete brake job is always the best bet. If nothing else, you get a fresh caliper, piston, seals, all that. You get fresh pads, and you get a fresh rotor. Of course, there are rotor turning specifications for pretty much any brake rotor out there, but I don't have a brake lathe, so yeah. Not to mention, too, you'd have to Google those or find them on All Data or Mitchell's. You probably might also find it on the rotor as well. With that being said, I am Adventure Link. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this video, some kind of entertainment value, information. I hope your repair job goes well after watching this video. Please tell me how your job goes. Please also rate and subscribe. It's in the video description. Your rates tell YouTube and myself how good or bad of a job I'm doing and help play out the searches as such. Your subscriptions also allow you to see any new videos that I make on YouTube. Especially when you hit that little bell button. You'll get notified as soon as I make a, a video of Hot Fresh off the presses. Any questions, comments, concerns, praise, criticisms, well wishes, prayers, etc. Please take them down to the comment section. I do my best to answer everyone's questions. If I don't have the answer to the question, I will just tell you I don't know or try to direct you somewhere else that would have this information. Which, speaking of which, if you have any questions about Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge minivans as a whole, I would advise you go over to the Chrysler Minivan Fan Club forums. Or if you're on Facebook, there's the Chrysler and Dodge Minivan Owners Group. Make sure you join up on both mediums. Search the boards, post your questions, mingle with the community and the fine folks there. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have in a timely manner. It's starting to get pretty toasty outside and starting to get humid too, so make sure you stay cool, stay in the shade, wear your sunscreen, or light-colored, loose-fitting clothing just like this. Make sure you eat right, stay active, stay healthy, stay hydrated. Don't let others push you around. And slow down for the inclement weather, please. This is Adventure Link, and we're going to sign off this video with the wise words of wisdom from Eric the Car Guy. Be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. Until next video, I'll see you all next time.